Correct. So um, it's, it's the sequel to Super Meat Boy? Yes. Um, so what's different about Super Meat Boy Forever that wasn't in Super Meat Boy 1? Uh, so all new arts, all new levels, all new everything. Um, the control scheme is different. Uh, he's always running. Uh, it's only a two button game and the levels are randomly generated in a way. Uh, if you imagine a level as being generated from like a hundred smaller levels, like each level has like a hundred smaller levels that it generates from. So yeah, a lot different uh, story-wise. You're, uh, you're trying to rescue your daughter Nugget instead of Bandage Girl. You can play as Bandage Girl in this one. And yeah, it's still a ridiculously hard game. Uh, and the two buttons actually make it so we can make it even harder, but still it feels it feels good, so it still feels like Meat Boy. So, um, so a lot of sequels to games are simply called like Game Two. Yeah. Well, so, why did you guys choose to call this one Super Meat Boy Forever as opposed to Super Meat Boy Two? For that exact reason, <laughs> I I didn't want to call it Super Meat Boy Two because uh, I thought I could do something better with it, and it sort of plays into the entire randomly generated thing. Uh, you can play it forever. So, yeah. It's not an infinite runner. No, it is not an infinite runner because it's set worlds that are designed, you know, start to finish sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, so what inspired you to make the first Meat Boy game? Because it's definitely, it's, it's a very difficult game, and it's definitely a bit of a weird aesthetic for something that's just like, kind of out there. Yeah, it's like cute and gross. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because that's just in the, you know, when we did the first game, that was just kind of the, the aesthetic that the, the original artist Edmund, that's just kind of his thing, and then, you know, we just carry it through with the second game. So, yeah, it just sort of, yeah, it just makes something different, weird, and difficult is kind of the thing. So, like, we're at a very big convention right now, and there are probably hundreds of games. What do you want people to come to this booth? What do you want them to come away with? What do you want them to think? I, I want them to come away uh, because a lot of people will think that because we've made a two-button game that we've made an easy not a great game. Like They'll think we've made a mobile game, and uh, that's not what we've made. So I want them to come away saying, and this actually happens all the time, that it's different, but it still feels like Meat Boy. And uh, it's been successful in that way, because literally I've heard people just in passing say that exact phrase. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy about that. So, so, so you said yourself that um, it's moved to kind of like a two-button system. Yes. Like a, like, why did you make the choice to make it different from the original one? Like, how is that kind of impacting how you make it? Well, uh, I wanted to do something different again because that's just sort of what, like, in my career, I I don't like doing the same thing over and over. Like, if I wanted to make Meat Boy Two just to make money and just to like turn something around quick, I would have just made Meat Boy Two with 600 levels. Like, I just would have made more of the same. And for me, that doesn't interest me. I don't. I don't. I need challenges. And with this game. Uh, I wanted to make a randomly generated platformer, and I wanted to make something that was easy to play. And yeah, like it's it, it actually changes how we have to make levels because we have to compensate for the fact that you can't just turn around on the spot. But that plays into exactly how the first game was made because with the first game, I created the controls, uh, and we didn't make any levels for about three months. It took me three months to get the controls perfect. And this game, similar. I got the controls perfect before we made a single level, and once we made, you know, once the controls are perfect, you make levels. You can make stuff that's very complementary to each other, very symbiotic. And yeah, so there's a lot of design considerations uh, for making a level for this game that we wouldn't have had in the original Meat Boy. So yeah, it's it's sort of it's just a new challenge and just new. It's fun to try new stuff. Like when we made the first Super Meat Boy, everybody was making pretty easy games. Like it was, you had uh, Mario, what was it, new Super Mario Brothers that had like the Super Guide and like a lot of, there wasn't a lot of challenging games. And then we, we bring this out, now everybody makes challenging games. So, you know, it's, it's fun to do new stuff. So, so talk to me about the development process. Can you tell me what it was like making, making the first Meat Boy and this one? Well, uh, first Meat Boy was very much just uh, me and Edmund, just just two people, and uh, it was actually a lot of fun um, until the very, very end, where you have to go through console certification and stuff, where you have to do like if somebody saves their game to a USB card and then pulls the USB card out, you have to put up a notice, which is dumb to me because they consciously made a decision. But 
Uh, yeah, development was a lot of fun, and um, yeah, we got through it, and everything went well. And this one is very similar. Uh, it just feels feels good to work on it, and uh, it's different because it's not a struggle for money or anything anymore. So, yeah. So obviously, the first Meat Boy game was very successful. Yes. So, um, did, like, did you see that coming? Like, what was it like being that successful? And do you think that's influenced this game? Um, I didn't. I didn't see. I knew the game would do well because I knew the game was good. Like I, I didn't know how well. I figured it would do well enough to like probably make the next game and pay off some bills. I didn't think it would do, you know, four million sales. I didn't think it would do anything like that. Um, and for this one, I honestly don't know. Um, I know this is a good game. I think it will do. I think it'll do well, but uh, the market has also changed since 2010. So I have no idea if it'll do better or worse and I, th I think it'll do enough to pay some bills like I have the exact same expectations that I did with the first Meat Boy it's like it'll be worth my time to do this for sure and if it does better than that then hooray <laughs> yeah, so, so it's like you said um, when, when um, Meat Boy came out the original um, there weren't a lot of very hard games out there but, but Super Meat Boy and the first one and from what I can see the second one mm -hmm. they are brutal games yes like, uh, why did you decide to make them as hard as you did well, it's it kind of a throwback to um, just the games I grew up with. Like I grew up in the NES days when you had stuff like Mega Man, and you know those, those kind of difficult games. And those those difficult games are like part of my video game pedigree in a way. Like that's that's what I see a video game as is something that's challenging. And I although I do enjoy like storied games like Metal Gears and stuff like that. But as far as my scope and what I am able to make. I, you know, this this is what I can make. This is what I can do. So it's just a, it's just like, you know, why does an artist paint squirrels? You know, because they like squirrels. You know. <laughs> and, 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 and like you mentioned, and ever since the original Meat Boy came out, it's gotten a lot harder. Do you think that was? Do you think that was related to Meat Boy? I think so. Um, it's it's weird hubris to say yeah, it totally was. But I I think and and I know from other developers. I, they've, they've come up to me and they said, you've inspired me to do this. We're doing a super hard platformer that's inspired by Meat Boy. Like, I've, I've heard that several times, especially at conventions like this. I, I hear it all the time. So I think maybe uh, the success of it and it made people realize, oh, people, there still is a market for something challenging. There, that, that still exists. You don't have to make sure that your $100 million cutscene at the end of the game is seen by everybody. You know, you don't have to do that. You can... You can make something and people will play through it. There's tons of people that have 106 percented Super Meat Boy. Like, there's tons of people here at PAX that have beaten every level of this. It takes them a while, but uh, they do it. Like, people people enjoy a challenge. Right? So, do you like Super Meat? Like, do you like the Meat Boy? Like, how good are you at it? Oh, I I've 106 percented it a whole bunch of times. So yeah, I I enjoy it. Yeah. And do you like a lot of hard games? Or? I actually don't play too many games. I uh, I don't have a ton of time to do stuff, so I try to make sure that the games I play are ones that are going to be worth my time. And unfortunately, that tends to be like your Mario's and your Zelda's and stuff like that. So uh, I do enjoy a challenge. I really liked Breath of the Wild, how brutal it was. I really, really like that about it. So I guess you could say I enjoy hard games. I just don't I don't actively seek them out. Probably like I should, but you know. I can't pull time out of air. <laughs>